and lying on your backs with your feet mat distance apart so your knees are bent and <clears throat> your feet are mat distance apart so that your knees can then fall in and be resting against each other in the middle. You might have your hands on your lower belly or by your sides, it doesn't matter. We'll take a few moments to settle here this morning. You might have just tumbled out of bed. A couple more people might be arriving. So take a few, few moments to settle into your body, settle into the contact with the floor. And observing what is here for you right now. What have you come to the mat with this morning? Are you feeling a bit sluggish and heavy maybe? Or maybe you had a really refreshing deep sleep and you feel fresh and full of energy. How is your breath right now? Does it feel free? Is your abdomen quite soft, your diaphragm soft, so you can feel a, a full breath in? Or maybe you feel a little bit constricted in your breath this morning, that would be fine. I'm just noticing and welcoming in everything, all sensations all emotions. Really giving yourself into the, to the floor. You can really feel the back of your head, back of the ribs, back of your pelvis and the soles of your feet. Let's take a while longer here. Breathing with the morning. Breathing with what's present right now. You might want to check in a little bit more detail into sensations in your face around the eyes. Can you soften maybe the tissues around and behind your eyes so you can give them a rest? Can you feel the flow of air in your nostrils all the way back to your sinus cavities and throat? Can you notice where your lips meet? And the position of the tongue in your mouth. Is it relaxed? In your throat, in your gums. I'm taking a few moments, if you would like to, to invite whatever, whichever quality you would like to come into your practice today. So this is a way of setting a sankalpa, your intention. How would you like to be today, on and off your mat? What quality would you like to bring into your relationships today or into all of your, whatever you're doing? And you can wish that as a resolve right into your heart space, right into every cell of your body.
it might have as much to do with you as it might have to do with how you're feeling about somebody else right now. Lovely. And then you can keep your eyes closed if you want. We're going to take very easy, gentle windshield wipers to begin with. Or you might like to open your eyes. And you're going to gently begin to move your knees to the left very slowly. And your eyes can move to the right. So you could take your arms out now if you like. In a very lazy little twist to start the practice. I'm taking two or three breaths here just to feel the body, just to feel the pelvis, the inner thighs, the shoulder blades. Those of you who were here last night for the shoulder yin might be feeling quite nice in the shoulders. I feel great. Thanks for your beautiful feedback. And then bringing your head gently back to neutral as you lift your knees up to the centre and then gradually allow them to float down to the right as your head moves around to the left. And take a couple of breaths here, really sinking into the pelvis, really soft in the lower belly. Across your collarbones and your face. And we'll take this movement again. And you have a choice. You could just keep moving from side to side. Or you could come down, down and stay for a few breaths again. I'm going to leave you for a few moments to explore this windshield wiper movement. But we are aiming for softness. You feel into the tenderness of your inner thighs, your skin. That gentle stretching on the outside of the hip as you twist over to the other side. Just a few more moments. Just a few more moments. Remember your head always goes in the opposite direction to your knees. Lovely connection with the floor, with the mat. Lovely and heavy. And then next time your knees are coming up from the right, Keeping them up and knocking them in towards the center again, hands on your belly. And taking a full breath in, really inflating your abdomen. And with an open mouth, exhaling, feeling everything sinking towards the mat. And we'll do this two more times, a full breath in. Lovely sinking breath out. And one more time, a full breath in. <sighs> Lovely to see you're here, Charity. Hope you're well and your baby. And then gently pulling your knees apart and drawing your feet together. And bringing your knees in towards you with your hands. And you, Rachel. Rachel Hunt, I haven't seen you for ages. I hope you're well. I know you're working super hard, so it's lovely that you've managed to make a Saturday class. Love to you. And then taking those circles in the opposite direction, just a little bit of a massage on the lower back. And then breathing in, really drawing your knees in towards you, a little bundle. And as you breathe out, Slide the left leg away, but keep the right knee in towards you. And you can push through the left heel a bit. And take a moment to feel into the squeezing in of the right knee. You might want to move the knee around a little bit as we just explore into the right hip. 
moving from side to side, maybe a little bit of a circle. And then squeezing your knee in towards you, inhale. And as you exhale, leave your knee where it is and take your arms down by your side. And now inhale. And on the exhale, you're going to lift your head and your chest and your arms with your palms facing each other. And we'll take two or three breaths here, really drawing the side waist back, the navel to the spine, trying not to strain your neck. Take another breath in. And then take your hand behind your head to breathe out and gently release the head. So it's nicely back on the floor. And then holding onto your right knee again, draw the left knee in so the foot is standing on the floor. Lovely. And then we'll take half happy baby on the right. So sole of your foot facing the ceiling. And you might hold on to the foot with one or two hands or hold on lower down the leg if you can't reach the foot. And you ease your knee down towards your armpit. And your left knee could fall out to the side or you might like to take the left leg out and extend it, maybe even lift it off the floor like I am. And take a few breaths and it's early in the practice. This might feel a little bit sticky. So you might want to move around a little bit, a little bit from side to side. But we are looking for a lovely, heavy, flat back of the pelvis against the floor. And breathe here. Very soft in the face. Staying for a few more breaths. One more breath in. And then as you breathe out, draw up your left foot again if it was extended and bring your right knee in towards you. Take a breath in. And then release your right foot and slide both feet away and feel the difference between the two sides of the body. Just a very gentle grounding, opening into the right side. And then bringing your left knee in towards you with your hands, you can push away through the right heel. And taking a few breaths here to squeeze the left knee in towards you and to move around a little bit, just to explore Sensation in the left hip this morning. Feeling into the left side of the body. You might want to, I forgot this on the other side, you might like to circle into your ankles. Why not circle into both of your ankles, even though your right leg's extended, because I neglected the right ankle. You could circle in one direction. And you could circle in the other direction. Lovely. And then holding your knee a little bit further in towards you, inhale, and as you exhale, keep your knee where it is and release your arms down by your sides. And inhaling here, and as you exhale, lifting your chest and your head and your arms, palms facing, to look down the body. Take a couple of breaths, really drawing sideways the navel in towards the spine. One more inhale here. And as you exhale, interlace your hands behind your head to gently release the head down, protecting the neck. And holding your left knee again, draw the right knee in, foot on the floor. And we take half happy baby on the left. So either holding the foot or somewhere else down the leg. And with a little bit of pressure, encouraging the left knee down to the hip, um, armpit, I should say. And you can allow your right knee to just drop out to the side. This is to find a balance in the pelvis or lengthen out the right leg a little bit at an angle, maybe off the floor slightly. And then you might want to shimmy around a little bit, move around, feeling into the back of the pelvis, feeling into the left hip and breathe. And breathe here. If your right leg is extended, you can really push through the heel and pull your toes towards you. This is a lovely way to access our psoas muscle. 
One more breath in. And then breathing out, bend up the right knee again, foot on the floor. And draw your left knee in towards you. Lovely, take a breath in. And then on the exhale, sliding both legs away and taking a moment to feel the whole body. Whole body. Noticing your breath. And on the next breath in, lifting your arms over your head. With a full stretch from your toes to your fingertips. And exhale, release down. We'll take two more like this. Take a breath in and really stretch the whole body from your fingertips to your toes. And release. Take one more full stretch, inhale. I think iPad 2 is you, Rosie, I hope so. And if it's not, I'd love to whoever it is. Exhale here. And then take another inhale. Stretch, stretch, stretch. And as you exhale, bringing your hands to your knees and drawing yourself into a tight little ball. Maybe you can slide your hands down to your feet, and lift your head up. So you're really drawing into a lovely little tight package. Taking a couple of breaths here, squeezing everything in. A little bit of a massage for the abdomen. Lovely. Taking in one more breath in here. And then releasing the head down, breathe out. And we're going to roll up. So if you can, take your fingers behind your knees and you're going to roll from head to tail. Or if you need to, roll to one side. We'll take a few rolls here for the spine if this is what you're able to do. Few rolls until you come up into half boat. Coming straight into half boat this morning. And let's take a couple of breaths, really spread the collarbones, draw the sideways back, and try not to clench with your jaw and your eyes and your yeah, your throat. So you can smile to release there. Point your toes. And then we can take a little bit of an opening on the inhale. And exhale, draw back in again. And inhale, open. And exhale, really feel the strength of your abdomen. Inhale. And then exhale and see if you can stay here for a moment. You can hold your knees if you need to. And then inhale, lift your arms up. And as you exhale, move your knees to the left and float your hands down to the right, looking towards your hands. And as you breathe in, come back to the center, lift your arms. And as you breathe out, float the other way. A little bit of a floaty, twisty Navasana. Let's take another one, breathe in. Breathe out. And of course, if you need to drop your feet in between, that's absolutely fine. Otherwise, let's just take a couple more. Make it light and floaty. Last time to the left, lovely. And now come to the front and maybe take a full boat. Full boat, pointing your toes, open in the chest, strong core. One more breath in and then take your knees, breathe out and rock gently forwards. Take a moment here just to breathe into your lower back because I think Navasana, has a, there's always a risk of a little bit of hard work going on down here if you're not strong enough in the core. So just coming forwards, really soft. Maybe turning your head gently from side to side. Ear to each shoulder. Chin to your chest, just allowing the neck and the shoulders to soften just for two more breaths. Beautiful. And then if you'd like to come your way to join me in an all fours position. And you're going to need, I probably should have said before, you're going to need a block or a blanket or something. Um, because we're going to come into a squat shortly. And some of you might need to take your heels onto that prop. Otherwise, you can roll your mat up to give you a bit of a lift for your heels. 
And now spreading your fingers, and really finding that length in the spine. We'll come into some very simple cat-cow movements. So taking a breath in and beginning to follow that breath with the spine as you dip and you open your chest and your throat. Make it really quite delicious this morning. Feel into the side waist and the opening after all that boat work. As you breathe out, scooping up, chin to your chest, navel to the spine, drawing the tailbone down. And again, I'm gonna leave you to take a few breaths here. You might go really, really slow in your cat-cow, feeling into every millimeter of movement. Or you might be a little bit faster. I'm feeling a little bit slow this morning myself. Watched an amazing, well, I thought it was an amazing film last night that maybe you've all already seen. It came out in 2018. It was a Polish film called Cold War. It's really lovely. I really recommend it. It's not on Netflix, unfortunately. Take a few more breaths to simply feel it's a lovely articulation of the spine, bone by bone, feel it. And feel the muscles of your side waist and abdomen as you exhale, a little bit of a lift up from the pelvic floor. Beautiful. And then next time you exhale and scoop up, coming back to a pose of the child. So you could actually sway around a little bit here, from heel to heel, from hand to hand. And then come down to rest so that your forehead is either touching the mat with your arms extended or bring your hands underneath your forehead. And see if you can become super soft so that you feel like the skin of your forehead is the softest it's ever been as you feel yourself even breathing through the skin of your forehead. In the palms of your hands. Becoming very soft at the back of the heart space, and possibly recalling your intention for this practice because it's so easy to leave that behind, so easy to become distracted. Stay present with the breath. And then from here, inhaling, coming to all fours, curling your toes under, and coming into a downward dog. And it's the first downward dog, so. Take about five breaths to find your way. You might want to bend your knees one at a time or both together. Stay present to the breath. Looking for length in the spine. And you can really hug the muscles of your arm bones, of your arms to the bones. So you press into your hands and your feet, almost pulling them mat apart. On the next breath in, if you'd like to look in between your hands, and walk your feet into a forward fold. And we're gonna come straight into Malasana. We're gonna come straight into a squat. So you might like to take your heels a bit further apart, your toes pointing out. And like I said, this is the time when you might want to take your heels onto either a rolled up mat or a block behind you. You're gonna settle down slowly. Settle down slowly so that you're able to maybe bring your heels down, especially if you've got a support. It's important that your heels are touching something, so I want to have a sense of rootedness. We're going to flow quite a lot soon, and it's really lovely to flow from a sense of an earthy stability. So if you can, bring your upper arms inside your knees and use them to push the knees apart, and then bring your hands together. And we'll take a few breaths. I want you to really press the knees apart, press the heels of your hands together, and press the heels of your feet also. So it's quite a lot of pressing. And then from that pressing, brighten in the chest, brighten around the collarbones. 
Hi, Anissa. Trouble is with me shouting out DJ status. I can only see on my screen from A to G. So anybody beneath G. So last person is Gila. Hi, Gila and Michael. It's just so lovely that you all keep coming. I can't tell you. Thank you so much. Let's take a few breaths, more even, if you can. So really dropping down through your pelvic floor, your sitting bones, but with a lovely length in the spine and a brightness in the chest. Breathe. Let's take three more breaths. I know for some people this squat is their nemesis. But I hope you're looking after yourself by raising your heels on top of something. Take one more full breath in and then release. So your spine is curled, chin into your chest. And come up onto your fingertips and pressing into your fingertips, begin to lift your bottom up behind you. So you slowly come into a forward fold, and taking your feet to parallel and about sitting bone distance apart. And from this stability in your feet, begin to straighten your legs and open out your heart. So we have a long spine in Ardha Uttanasana and roll the shoulders away from the spine. Let's take three breaths here. We're looking for length from the hip crease to the armpit. I'm really separating the sitting bones and the tops of your thighs lift up and back. Wonderful. One more breath in and then step back to your downward dog. Breathe out. Mm, it feels so good to do yoga, doesn't it? I can't believe it. One more breath in here and then simply drop your knees, exhale. And bringing your right fingers to your heart space. Breathe in, lift the right elbow and twist slowly to the right. And breathe out, thread the right arm through to the left, come down. We're gonna do that two more times before we come down to stay. Breathe in, find your twist. So this twist comes into the thoracic spine, the part of the spine that coincides with the ribs, so hard to access. Exhale, come down. And then last time, come up. But come up on your left fingertips. So we take a breath or two here to really spin a little bit more to the right. Feel the arm, the inside arm. Feel the right shoulder blade carving in towards the spine. One more breath in. Getting a bit enthusiastic. Breathe out, thread through. And we'll take a moment here. Weight poured down through the right shoulder side of the head. And then lift up the left arm. Turn the thumb away and reach over your lower back towards the top of the right thigh. And take a couple of breaths. Just now you might feel your left shoulder blade moving in towards the spine as you spin around to the left a little bit. So good. One more breath in here. And then breathe out. Drop your left hand. Pressing into your left hand. Breathe in. Come up one more time. Oh, that's so lovely. And then breathe out, bring your hand down. Gorgeous. Left fingertips to the chest. And then breathe in, begin to open to the left. And breathe out, thread through. And then breathing in, lifting and opening. Thank you for your lovely messages, Caroline. Breathe out, come down. And then last time, breathe in, come up. Come up onto your right fingertips. You have a little bit more room to maneuver. Breathe out here and take a couple more breaths. Feeling the left shoulder blade now moving in towards the spine. Really energizing into the palm of your hand fingertips. One more breath in. And then thread through. So your weight pulls into your left shoulder, side of the head. Lifting up your right arm, turn the thumb away sweeping the hand over the lower back and reaching for the top of your left thigh. And maybe you can look over your right shoulder, spin it a little bit and feel the right shoulder blade now. Breathe. And 
One more breath in. And then dropping your right hand, breathe out. And we'll come up one more time, press into the right hand, breathe in. And then bringing both hands down. And taking a moment to feel the body here. So you have an option for what we're going to do now to hold onto the sides of your mat. So you grip and pull. You can see I've taken my hands quite far beyond my shoulders. So you're just going to take a dynamic anahatasana, dynamic heart melting pose. So take a breath in and then breathe out, melt your chest down, pull the mat forwards. Lovely. And then breathe in, come up. Breathe out, come down. Melting in between the shoulder blades. One more time, breathe in, come up. And then breathe out, come all the way down. Now you might want to stay for a few breaths, either resting on your forehead or on your chin. Maybe your chest comes all the way down. Sometimes it's really nice to take the side of the head down. Gives you a little bit more room to completely melt the heart towards the floor. You can bring your attention to the back of the heart space, the front of the heart space. And if your head is on one side, take it to the other side. And breathe, lovely opening for under the arms, side ribs. One more breath in. And then do come to your forehead, release your hands from gripping the mat. Very, very gently. Slide yourself back to a rabbit just for a moment, forearms sitting back towards your heels. You can take a few breaths here, breathing into the back of the body. So I hope some of you've got playlists on. I need to, I keep saying I'm going to make fresh music for you, and I am um, definitely fallen way down my to do list, but watch this space. Gently lift yourself to all fours now. And pressing into your hands, slide your feet away, curling your toes under to come into a plank. And we'll hold this plank for five breaths. So pushing through the heels, drawing the side waist up, navel to the spine, maybe pushing up behind your shoulder blades towards the ceiling. Breathe here, the lovely stability and strength of Phalankasana, plank pose. One more breath in, and then drop your knees, breathe out, and come back to a downward dog. But this time I want your knees to be so bent that your chest and your belly are on your thighs, and you're really shooting your bottom out behind you. Breathe here, really push into your hands, shoot your bottom, your pelvis tilting forward. Should feel pretty lovely. One more breath in and then begin to lift your bottom, lift your heels, straighten your legs. Take your heels down towards the floor. Gorgeous. Feel the body, feel the quality of your breath. So nice in these flows not to go too fast, I feel. And then looking in between your hands, walk, step or jump your feet forwards and come straight into a half forward fold. Long spine, open chest, feet parallel. Take a breath in, strong legs now and breathe out, fold completely. Take another breath in and lengthen, open the chest. Breathe out, fold completely. And we'll do one more. So if we're gonna twist, we need to find as much length in the torso as possible, really space around the spine. And breathe out, fold. And now breathe in one more time, lift your heart. And as you breathe out, step back with your right foot, please bring the knee down to the floor. And take a moment here. You could move your knee a little bit further behind you. You could have your toes curled under or not. It depends on you. And then lift the chest. And keep pressing into that front foot. You can always draw the tailbone down a little bit so you're not shooting 
the bottom out here, you're tucking under. And then from this stability, breathe in. You come up into a full Anjaneyasana. And then breathe out, drop your hands. We're going to do that three times. Breathe in, lift. Really drawing up the front of the spine, the pubic bone, and breathe out, come down. One more time, breathe in. Breathe out. <laughs> and this time, breathe in and come to stay for two or three breaths. So we're looking for a lot of stability in that left leg. Drawing the pubic bone up, coming up the front of the spine. Maybe take your gaze up between your hands if you feel stable. And then on the next breath in, straighten with your arms vertical. And breathe out. Take a little twist to the right. Look over your right fingertips. It's quite awkward. And then breathe in, sweep your arms up. And now breathe out, take a little twist to the left, looking over your left fingertips. Lovely. And then breathe in, come up to the top. And breathe out here. Take another breath in and really energize through your fingertips. Breathe out, hands come down. Find your downward dog. Beautiful. Taking a couple of breaths here. Maybe your downward dog's beginning to feel a little bit more spacious, a little bit more open. And then looking in between your hands, walk, step or jump your feet forwards and come straight to half forward fold, inhale. Exhale, fold completely. Inhale, lift your chest. Strong legs and exhale, fold completely. And then breathing in, lift the chest again. And exhale, take a step back with the left foot, the knee comes down. Taking that left knee as far back as feels right for you. Little tuck of the tailbone and open the chest. Take a couple of breaths here. Really pressing down through the ball of the right big toe and the heel, so you feel that stability. And then from that stability, rising up, breathe in. And Janayasana. And breathe out, float your hands back down. And then breathe in. And breathe out. This time we breathe in to stay up. Breathe in. And maybe, maybe you take a little bit of a back bend if you're feeling very stable in your core, in your lower back, maybe, maybe. You take your gaze to look in between your hands. Becky, I can't tell you how happy it makes me that you're able to come as well on a Saturday morning. Thank you so much. Big love to you from, from Will and I. One more breath in. And then breathe out, straighten. Take another breath in. And as you breathe out, twist to the left. Look over your left fingertips. Trying to relax in the shoulders. Breathe in, come to the top. And breathe out, twist to the right. Look over your right fingertips. And then breathe in, come to the top. Lovely, breathe out here. Take another breath in, quite jubilant. And then breathe out, hands come down. Come to your downward dog now for five breaths, feeling into your downward dog. Bending, walking your knees out if you need to, or you might want to stay still. Try pressing into the base of the thumb and the forefinger on each hand to see what that does for rolling your shoulders out, your upper arms come around. And breathe. And then looking in between your hands, walk, step or jump your feet forwards and inhale straight into a half forward fold again. And this time we're going to exhale and hold a while in a, in a full forward fold. So if you aren't able to, if you have any pain in your lower back, bend your knees. 
Otherwise, you might have straight legs and you might take your hands behind the lower legs. You might hold on to your big toes. But your chin is into your chest now and you're, every exhale, you're drawing your navel towards your spine to pull you down. You're taking the tops of your thighs up and back. Breathe. Lovely, lovely for the whole of the back body. Keep separating your sitting bones and lifting them up behind you. Staying very present to the breath. One more breath in and a long breath out. And then bringing your hands to your heart space. We're gonna come all the way up, press through your feet, breathe in and come all the way up. Maybe look up at your hands and then breathe out, hands down to your heart. Take a moment to feel the body now. Wonderful. And then breathing and come up again. And breathe out, fold all the way down. Breathe into flat back. Come to downward dog. So if you find vinyasas, this movement from downward dog to plank, too tiring, come to all fours and take that cat-cow spinal movement. Otherwise, coming with me, lift your heels and you're gonna slowly suck the front body into the back body as you scoop your way into a plank. And then come all the way back again, knees bent. And with your knees bent, inhale. And as you exhale, shift your heels and your bottom to the right and dip down, a little bit of a twisty dog. Breathe in, come back to the center. Breathe out, twist your heels and your bottom to the left. Breathe into the center, knees bent. And then straighten your legs, exhale. Wonderful. And we come to one of those scoopy movements forwards to plank. So lift your heels, suck the front body and the, to the back body as you ripple forwards to your plank and stay here for two or three breaths. Take a breath in and then gently lower yourself your way down to the mat. You could drop your knees. And we'll take a moment, you have a choice to rest, either flat on your belly like I'm going to, or you might prefer to take a few breaths in child's pose. I want you to really soften the back of your neck and your forehead and breathe into the belly. Breathe and recenter. Come back to yourself. Come back to your intention. And then bringing your hands by your ribs. Come to all fours and a downward dog. And really firming down now through both hands and arms and through your left foot. Breathe in, take the right leg up behind you. And on the breath out, draw forwards with your shoulders and bring your knee into your nose, scooping up the sideways to the navel. And breathe and extend your right leg out behind you. And breathe out knee to nose, really rocking forwards. Let's do that one more time, breathe in. And breathe out knee to nose. And can you, at the end of the exhalation, step the right foot in between your hands? Inhale here. Exhale, drop your knee. Or you have the choice of keeping your knee up if you would like to. And then breathing and lift up. And then breathe out, twist to the right. Really feel your abdominal organs twisting here. Take a breath or two. Stable through that front foot. And then on the next breath in, sweeping both arms up. And breathe out, find your downward dog. On the next breath in, pull yourself, ripple yourself forwards to a plank. And then exhale, come back to bent knee, downward dog. Breathe in here. And again, exhale, heels and bottom to the right, really pushing your hands into the mat. Breathe in back to the center. 
heels and bottom to the left, pushing your hands into the mat, breathing into the center. Exhale, straighten your legs. On the next breath in, ripple yourself forwards to plank. Exhale here. Taking another breath in. Come back to downward dog. And pressing into both hands on your right foot now. Breathe and lift the left leg up behind you. Lift it high from the navel. And on the breath out, knee to nose, but rippling your shoulders forwards over your wrists. And breathe in, lengthen, leg out behind you. Breathe out, knee to nose. And breathe in one more time. Lift, lift, lift. Knee to nose. And at the end of that little knee to nose, shoot your left foot in between your hands. Either drop the back knee or not. Lovely. And come straight up, lifting your arms, inhale. And exhale, find your twist to the left. Take a breath or two here, your abdominal organs moving you to the left, soft face. And then breathing in, come all the way up. And breathing out, find your downward dog. Wonderful. And just take a couple of breaths here to stabilize, to find your center. And looking in between your hands, walk, step, or jump your feet forwards. And inhale, straighten to a flat back. And exhale, fold completely. And inhale, straighten to a flat back. And exhale, fold completely. And then one more time, inhale, really find the length. And exhale. Bringing your palms to your chest. Inhale, come all the way up. And exhale, hands to your heart. Hope you're doing okay. So it's a slow build up today. Feeling quite warm. Breathing and lifting your arms up again. Really feel your feet and breathe out, come all the way down. Breathing into a flat back. And breathe out, step back to your downward dog. Wonderful. And we lift our heels, we suck the front body into the back body as we scoop our way to plank. Inhale. And exhale, come with your knees bent back to your downward dog. Take a breath in. And as you breathe out, take your heels and your bottom to the right. Press into your hands. Breathe into the center. Breathe out, heels and bottom to the left. Lovely. Breathe into the center. And then straighten out your legs if you want to. Exhale here. And now lifting up the right leg again. Inhale. And as you exhale, just one time this time, knee to nose and step the foot forwards. Now I'm going to keep my back knee up. It'll depend on your energy. I want you to really stabilize down through the front foot and breathe in, come all the way up. Notice I'm dipping my left knee a little bit, but straightening it as I exhale and twist to the right. Take a breath or two here. Really looking over the right fingertips. And then inhale, come all the way up to the front. Exhale here, take a breath in. Downward dog. Wonderful. Lift your heels and ripple yourself forwards into plank inhale. And exhale, downward dog. Knees right into your chest. Shoot your bottom out behind you. Heels are lifted, inhale. Exhale, dip your hips and your heels to the right. Inhale back to the center. Exhale, hips and heels to the left. Inhale back to the center and then straighten your legs out, exhale. And then lifting your heels, front body into the back body, scoop yourself into a plank, inhale. And exhale, come all the way back, downward dog. And planting your right foot down as you inhale and you lift your left leg up behind you. Exhale, knee to nose, 
step the left foot forwards and decide if you need to bring the back knee down or if you feel quite strong and buoyant here. We'll root down to the front foot as you breathe in to your Ashta Chandrasana, your high crescent lunge. You should be feeling pretty warm now, pretty open. Take another breath in and exhale, twist to the left. You can really push out through that back heel now. Take a couple of breaths. Wonderful. On the next breath in, lifting both arms out in front. And then find your downward dog. And then one last time here. Lift your heels, scoop yourself forwards to plank. Exhale back to your downward dog, bent knees. Take a breath in and then dip your heels, your bottom to the right, breathe out. Breathe into the center, heels and bottom to the left. So you're really pressing through both hands. Breathe into the center and then straighten your legs. Breathing and lift your heels, a lovely scoopy plank. And then exhale back to downward dog. Take a couple of breaths. Feeling the length and the space in the upper body, but also in the legs. And then looking in between your hands, step or walk your feet forwards. And inhale to flat back, lovely open chest, roll the shoulder blades down the spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift the chest, long spine. Exhale, fold. One more time, inhale. Exhale, fold. And then hands to your heart. Inhaling, come all the way up. And exhaling, bringing your hands down and taking your left hand across your chest. I'm really sweaty. Right hand across your belly. Have a close your eyes now. Come back to yourself. Come back to a steady breath over time. Rooting down through your feet. And observing how you feel. Hi Sadie, another very hard working key worker here on a Saturday morning, big love to you. People are working very, very hard. Okay my lovelies, if you'd like to release your hands, open your eyes, come to the front of your mat and breathe and lift up your arms and breathe out, fold. And breathe into a flat back. So a lot of repetition here. Step back to your downward dog. And breathe and lift up the right leg. And breathe out knee to nose. And step the foot forwards. And bring the back heel down please now. Front knee is tracking over the right ankle. Second big tone from that stability. Breathe in and come to a warrior one. Strong back leg. Take the tailbone down, lift the pubic bone, really come up the front of your spine. And breathe here. Breathe here. Breathe from the floor. Find the space up the body from that initial stability. One more breath in. And then straighten the front leg, breathe out. Turn to face the long end of your mat. Take our feet slightly wider apart, front heel in line with the back instep. And take a breath in here and then breathe out, come into your warrior two. Again, tuck the tailbone under, tilt the pelvis back to create space across the front of the pelvis. And breathe, really relax, loosen the shoulders. It's got a lot of heat in the body now. These poses, these traditional poses can feel so good once we've really warmed up. Beautiful. 
and turning over the right hand and inhaling. Coming into reverse warrior, straighten the front leg first. And then exhale, bend into that front knee. Beautiful. And you can either look down the back leg, which is quite nice, or look up at your fingertips. And breathe into the right side of the ribs. And then inhale, straighten both arms and the front leg. And breathe out, come into your version of side angle, either elbow on the knee, hand to the floor, or maybe you fancy a little bit of a bind today. Anyone who's fancying that. Take a couple of breaths, really drawing that right left shoulder around and back if you're in the bind, but also spinning your chest anyway, even if you're not binding. Breathe. One more breath in. And then look down on the breath out, release your hand if you are binding. In fact, I lie. If you are binding, see if you can hold on to the top of your right thigh with the left hand still. And we come up. We'll just have that arm around the back, it doesn't matter. Take a breath in. And then we come into reverse warrior, but with that little work with the left shoulder, hand coming around to the top of the thigh. That's not available to you. Take the reverse horror we took before with the arm down the back leg. Look behind you now and breathe. Hope into your body. Breathe that optimism in for the day. Beautiful. And then as you breathe in, straighten the front leg. Look down at the front foot and plant both hands down. Lift the back heel. Come to a downward dog. Breathe and feel the warmth. And we're gonna bend our knees, lift our heels, inhale. This time exhale, heels and bottom to the left first. Inhale back to the center. Exhale to the right. Beautiful. Inhale to the center. Exhale, straighten your legs. And then scooping the front body into the back body, inhale to your plank. And choose your way down to the mat. I'm going to drop my knees, but you might want to come down straight as a stick. Come all the way down. Wonderful. And then breathing in either peeling your chest up for a cobra or pressing into your feet and your hands and dropping your pelvis or an upward dog. And breathe out, come down again. Find your downward dog. And then lifting up your left leg behind you. Lift it up. Knee to nose and step your foot forwards in between your hands. Drop the right heel down. So your feet should be hip distance apart for this warrior one. You're not walking a tightrope from that stability. Breathe in, come all the way up. So you're drawing this left hip back a little bit as you really energize through that back foot, back leg. Tucking the pelvis back. So you breathe space into the front body right through to your fingertips. Really lift up from the back of the kidneys, Elena Brow style, that's what we did last week. Beautiful. And then inhale, straighten, arms up above you. Shuffle your feet a little bit further apart, so now that your front heel is in line with the back instep. And then exhale, find your warrior two, very juicy. Really releasing the shoulders, you can turn your palms up and around, and then back again. Tucking the pelvis back, soft gaze over the front fingers. Breathe. Really feel it your way. Try releasing your toes as you press into your heels. And then turn the left palm up and inhale into your reverse warrior. And straighten the front leg. And then come back in again, either looking down the back leg or up to your fingertips. Breathe into the left side.
lovely and stable, but also open and fresh. Inhale, come back to your warrior two. And then exhale, find your way to your side angle, elbow on the knee, hand to the floor, or possibly binding. And looking over your right shoulder. Don't forget to really push out through that back foot and spin to the right, breathe. One more breath in. And then breathing out, release that left hand down. So you still have your right arm wrapped around your back if that's what you were able to do. And then we come straight up, inhale, lift the arm, left arm, and find your way into the reverse warrior. You might even want to use your left hand to pull your right fingers around. And then look back down the back leg. And breathe into this slightly awkward reverse warrior. Find your own stillness, your own quality. One more breath in. And then release the bind. Take both hands down. Lift the back heel. Come to a downward dog. Beautiful. And then bend your knees. Inhale. Dip your hips and your heels to the left. Exhale. Inhale to the front and then twist to the right. Exhale. Last time. Inhale, come to your downward dog, straighten your legs. And scoop forwards to your plank unless you want to drop your knees now. Find your way down to the mat. Exhale. Peel your chest up for your cobra or your upward dog. Exhale, come down. And pushing yourself to all fours, let's take a brief pose of the child now. You could take your knees apart. Sit back to your heels. Either stretch your arms out in front of you. Or take your hands underneath your forehead. Come back to breathe, come back to yourself. Really soft now. Noticing where you still have nuggets of tension, knots of tension. And inviting a little bit of love, a little bit of softness into those parts of the body. And don't forget your skull. The sense of almost unhinging your jaw here. And breathing through the forehead, that's for you, Rachel. And feeling a softness at the back of your head and your crown. As you let go, really soft at the back of the chest. I'm basically just telling you what I'm feeling. That's really how I teach. <laughs> If, especially if I can't come and adjust people, I just teach from what I'm feeling. Hoping that some or most of it will resonate with some or most of you. Really lovely. And then gently. Bringing yourself to all fours, a very soft downward dog. We're just transitioning to standing. Looking in between your hands and walking or stepping your feet forwards. Breathe into a flat back. Breathe out, fold. And then palms together. Breathe in, come all the way up. Let's take a moment just to enjoy standing, feet firmly grounded, hands maybe to the belly. Oh, I hope you feel as good as I do. Really do. Or at least good in your way. And if you don't feel good, that's okay too. Okay. So if you bring your hands to your chest now, 
Need to bring a little bit of attention to a sense of rooting down through the heels and the balls of your feet. You can lift your toes. So you want to really feel that ground down through the lower body. Hands to your heart. And simultaneously, just lift up the back of the neck, out the top of the head. Maybe even drawing the tailbone down a bit. And then next time you breathe in, lift your arms up, lift your right leg and lift your toes towards the knee. And as you breathe out, straighten that leg out in front of you. And as you breathe in, bend the knee, really lifting the toes up and breathe out, straighten. One more time, breathe in, lift. And breathe out, straighten and hold here for three breaths. One more breath in, and then gently bend the knee, drop your hands and your foot down to the floor. A bit of a balance. And then bending in your knees here, this is a little bit of a challenge, you just see how you go, I might, I'll probably fall over. And you're going to bring your right ankle across the left knee, pulling your toes towards you. And you might like to just hold the foot and the knee just to find that stability. And you're really rooting down through the left foot. I'm going to take a cheeky little twist here. If you can, taking your palms together and pressing your left elbow against the right thigh or knee. And you're looking down, don't try and look over your right shoulder. And see if you can breathe in this little twist. Standing balancing twists are the hardest thing to do, or one of the hardest things to do in my mind. Breathe, soften the face, and then gently come out your way. Hula. And come back to that stability, your heels, the balls of your feet were rooting down. And breathe in, lift your arms, lift your left knee and pull the toes towards you, breathe out. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, push out. Breathe in, fold. Breathe out, push. Breathe in, fold. Breathe out, push really bright across the chest, relax in the face as you hold for three breaths. So you're holding from your core, which is the inner thigh muscles, all the way up deep into the abdomen. As you can see, I can't hold that high. Breathe in, breathe out, bend, release. Take a moment to feel the body. And then we bend in the knees. So you know now what's coming. Really firm down to the right, but try not to grip with the right toes. You can keep the right toes lifted. Then bring the left ankle across the right knee, toes pulling towards the knee. Take a moment here to sit back a little bit. So this is a version of Utkatasana chair pose. Really helps to tilt the pelvis back. And then take your right elbow over. So you need to really come across the torso. Palms meet. Press your hands together. So you keep twisting round to the left, but your gaze is down. Breathe, don't hold your breath. Find as much softness in the face as possible. And then gently come out your way. Take a moment, maybe eyes closed. There's nothing like the stability and stillness, even in a wobbling balance. It's an inner stillness, isn't it? invites into your practice. Coming to the front of your mat, very gently lifting your arms up, inhale. And exhale, hands down to your heart. Inhale, lift. And exhale, fold all the way down. 
chin into your chest. And then inhale, straighten your legs, lift your chest. Exhale, downward dog. Take a couple of breaths here. And then drop your knees. So we're gonna do a pigeon sequence. If you have any pain in the knee, please come to do pigeon on the back, which would mean that you take your right ankle over your left knee and you pull your legs in towards you. We're gonna bring the right knee forwards. Actually, yeah, okay. Tell you what, I'm gonna come this way. Bring the right knee forwards. Look over your left shoulder. We'll come softly into this pigeon. Make sure that that left leg is lovely and straight. So we should be pretty warm now after all of what we've done. So I'm hoping that this it feels like you can just settle down into your pigeon. If there's any pain in the right knee, like I say, please come to your back. And just shimmy around a little bit so you can really sink down in the pelvis. And guess what? We're going to twist in our pigeon. So one thing I do like to do with the right foot is to pull the toes towards the knee and press the outer edge to the little toe edge of that foot into the floor. This protects the tissues around the knee a bit more if you've got any delicacy there, which I do. And then move your hands around to the right. And this might be enough for you. You might be able to, it's a little bit like what we did in, our, in that standing balance. Bring your left elbow, so sweep the left arm across the chest. Press the left elbow into the right knee, might even touch the floor, mine doesn't. And then bring the right palm to the left palm. And you use the heels of your hands to press you a little bit into more of a spin to the right. Looking over the right shoulder. Pretty amazing pose. Take a couple of breaths here. Soft, soft, soft. One more breath in. And then breathe out, look down and release your hands. And you're gonna keel over. If you're on your back now, you need to come on to, into sitting. You're gonna keel over. So that you're, you're in Janushashasana, your right foot is inside the left thigh and the left leg is extended, toes pointing towards you and then shift your torso so it's facing it over the left leg, hands down wherever's right for you, you can always bend that knee if you need help to come forwards and then breathe in, lovely bright opening in the chest, long spine that you've developed. And breathe out, come down as far as is right for you. I'm crossing my wrists and holding my hands on either side of the foot. I just find that's a lovely way to come a little bit deeper into Janushashasana. So although the left leg is engaged, really we're introducing as much softness now into the rest of the body, into the right hip into the shoulders and the ribs and the back of the neck. Mm, it's lovely. It's lovely to do Janashashasana when you're really warmed up. And we're gonna gently come out, very, very gently. And look around to the front and take a breath in. And as you breathe out, we'll just take a little twist to the right. You can even lift up that left hip if you want and turn the left thigh inwards as you look over your right shoulder. In fact, you might even want to, I've just decided to change that twist into this pose. We press into the left foot and lift the hips. It's just lovely and opening. Take a couple of breaths, really breathe open the front of the body. And then we'll come back and we'll do what I plan to do, which is a little bit more of a twist. Nothing complicated. Take a breath in. And then as you breathe out, come back to the center. Take a breath in here. And then we'll take a closed twist around to the left.
So just using your abdominal organs, your eyes. You've done a lot of twisting already today. <coughs> Excuse me. One more breath in and then breathe out, come back. And we're going to sweep the left leg behind again to come back into pigeon or come onto your back if you're taking pigeon on the back. And we'll take a little bit of a moving pigeon here. So on the breath in, lift up the upper body, open the chest, take your head back. And as you breathe out, leading with the heart, come all the way down, chin into your chest right at the end. And then breathe in, peel yourself up, chin in, and then lift your chin. And breathe out, come all the way down. And then last time, find a real ripple. You should be able to really feel in between your shoulder blades as well. And we come down now to sleep for a while. Hands under your forehead or arms out in front of you. We haven't got too long actually, so taking a few breaths here. Complete and utter melty softness now until you're ready to bring yourself up, curl your back toes under. If you're on your back, roll over. And we'll take a downward dog just to stretch out before we take that final sequence to the left. Take a breath in your downward dog and then drop your knees and slide your left foot forwards or come onto your back, left ankle over the right knee. And sliding the right leg behind you, just check over your right shoulder that the leg is straight. Engaging with that left foot in the way I said, pressing the outer edge into the mat. And then beginning to bring your hands around to the left. If you can, bringing your right elbow. So on this side, I can touch the floor with the elbow. Otherwise, you're just pressing the elbow into the knee, palms together, looking over your left shoulder. And it just gives an extra, especially rich stretch and access into the left buttock and hip. Can you feel all those muscles there? A really deep stretch, as well as massaging your abdominal organs. Breathe. Really soft in the face. One more breath in and gently release. Roll over if you're on your back. Keel over onto the left side to bring your left leg out. Excuse me, right leg out, left foot into the thigh. And always bend the knee. Bring your torso around over that right leg. And inhale, lovely and long. And exhale, find your version of Janusha Shasana. You don't have to be holding onto the foot. So that's you find to bend the knee and just release the upper body down. And find your breath, maybe slowing the breath down a bit now as we come towards the end of this practice. Allowing everything to settle softly. Let go, really melt a little. And then we gently come up, gently come out, face the opening between your legs. Take a breath in. And as you breathe out, twist to the left. And you can change this twist into a little, I can't remember what this pose is called, I'm sure Rachel knows. Press into your left hand, press into your right foot and look up at your fingers. It's just such a liberating pose, I think. Really push the pelvis forwards, inhale. 
then come back down, exhale. And then take a breath in again, and now we take our twist to the left, right hand on the knee. You can always roll that right hip around if you need to. So to free up the twist to the left. Looking over your shoulder, soften the face. Come back to the front, inhale. And then we'll take that twist to the right. Just for a little, just a little twist. And come back to look at the centre and we just come back to pigeon. So if you're going to come onto your back, roll onto your back. Otherwise, slide the right leg behind you. Up on your fingertips. And really open in the chest. Take a breath in. And as you breathe out, come down. Chin into your chest, breathing in. Make it really soft and rippling up at the last moment and then breathe out lead with the chest come down chin into your chest one more time breathing in and then breathing out come all the way down to sleep your way and settle and soften into your pigeon And let go for a few more breaths. And then we gently come out. Gently come out if you're on your back, roll over for a very brief downward dog. This is just to open out after pigeons. You might want to just walk out your dog for a few breaths. Full breath in, and then dropping your knees on the breath out. And we're gonna do one seated pose before we come to lie down, and it's just to really stabilize the pelvis and the thighs. So it's a Vidrasana, if you can. So if you've got something to sit on, you could place your sitting bones on it and take your heels out to the side of your hips. I know this isn't available to everybody. If this isn't available, simply sit on your heels. And then really root down through the base of your pelvis. If you have got your feet like me out to the side, you can use your thumbs to work the outer edges of your feet around towards the floor. So the little toe is touching the floor. It's really nice to press your fists into the soles of your feet. And then from here, from this grounding, find a lift up through the chest, through the top of the head and relax the shoulders. Tuck the tailbone under. You could take your hands to the tops of your thighs and roll them inwards a little bit and press down to help this little bit of an internal rotation. And we'll just take a few breaths here. Feeling, really feeling everything. Noticing if you're holding tension in the face and in the upper body and where you can soften. And if you know that you want to stay here for longer, that's fine. I'm going to bring everybody down to Shavasana for five minutes and then with the option of um, inviting people to chat up on the gallery. If you know that that's not what you want, and I totally get that because I'm one of those people, if I go to anyone else's class, then you can just come into your Shavasana and lie still and soft for, I would say, if you can, for 10 minutes minimum.
And I'll take this opportunity just to thank everybody so much. And to please check if you're able to donate to Refugee Action. The Just Giving link is on Facebook and on the website, but that's always with the understanding that these yoga classes are here for everybody, whether or not you have any spare cash. So don't feel any obligation there at all. Thank you. And if you are ready to come down to lie on your backs, making sure you're warm enough. And allowing your feet to flop out to the side. I'll keep your legs quite wide apart, your arms away from the body, palms facing up. And that's all I'm going to say. I'm just going to leave you to surrender to the force of gravity, to bathe in sensation, and to let go completely. Let the earth have you. So it's half past 10. Like I said, if you want to continue resting, please do. But I'm going to unmute anybody, everybody and you have the option of chatting, of turning on your video 